Why is loyalty more important than anything? And what has it brought you staying loyal? Has it done you good? Yeah, it's done me staying loyal. I think we sort of do down the concept of loyalty and certainly sticking with Brexit. I think mm. it's, a, it's a perfect example of where loyalty is missing. I mean, politicians are public servants and we all got the same say during that referendum and they've sort of forgot now these politicians Theresa May her cabinet and the sort of Ramonas as they're called who are trying to stop Brexit that they are supposed to be loyal to the people the people have given them a directive and they are now being disloyal to what it, the fundamental part of their job is which is to be public servants so I wish if I kind of got managed to break into the House of Commons and could make a five minute rant I'd say you all need to remember what it is to be loyal not to your own principles not to what you think but to what the people told you to do have you ever had a situation where well I know you have where um, your constituents wanted one thing and you in principle wanted another definitely I mean you could say I've lost two parliamentary seats uh, on that basis uh, I, my seat was abolished by Tony Blair because I could not possibly countenance the then oncoming war on Iraq in 2003 neither could I support the so-called revolution in Syria which many of my constituents in in Bradford mm wanted me to do uh, but I have always tried to follow the the rule of to thine own self be true if you're not loyal to your own conscience uh, mm. then I believe uh, that what goes round will come round. But Ella's, Ella's point is that you were put in that position by the constituents in the area where yes, you were Yes, and they MPs, can remove you, you. But you were representing their thoughts and their feelings and what they wanted. No, no? I, that's not how I see the job of it's a not. Member of Parliament. You have to make your own judgment, you have to stand by it and pay the price So what if you necessary. believe is more important than what the people have elected you? Believe? Yes, because you cannot possibly know what's the mind of 85,000 people and even if you did know it, it would wouldn't mean that it was correct. If mm. you believe something, you have to stand for it and you have to pay the price. The You're problem is, isn't there, that the, the principle, there's so many principles involved mm. in the Brexit debate. People are talking about the principle of standing by your leader, the principle of going with democracy and a public vote, the principle of what they believe will deliver that public vote. Mm. I mean, it's very difficult to know where to, to stand, isn't it, and who to be loyal to. Well, it's not difficult from my point of view. And I think, actually, George, you're wrong. It's not about being principle to yourself. If you are in the business of politics, certainly if you're a politician, the principle is that you do what you were elected to do, which is answer to the people. And the, the So if everyone wanted to, hanging back, for example, I'd have to vote for hanging? You could resign if that's not what you wanted to do. But the whole point is, especially in relation to Brexit, I mean, we can put it in extreme cases of hanging or um, war, but let's stick with Brexit. The loyalty should be to democracy. And I feel like our poli I can't point to one politician today that I would trust to do this. That tells you about the state of loyalty within Parliament today. What about, what about from a personal perspective mm. as well, George, and, and beyond politics, beyond business? Uh, do you feel the same way that in your personal life, with your relationships with friends and family, that actually it's about being loyal to thyself, as you say, rather yeah, than... I think you have to uh, ask your conscience what you should do. I mean, you mentioned employer, for example. If I know it's absurd, but if your employer here mm. was doing something wrong, you can't stay loyal to them because they're your employer. You must do and speak as you think your uh, conscience is directing you. And have you ever experienced, I think Kate said this within the business world, but in personal life, have you ever experienced someone being disloyal to you personally, not, not within a work context? And, and has that made you feel sort of all the more that actually, do you know what, they trusted their principles, so I get it, or were you emotionally upset by it? Well, that? I think both are the case. You can be emotionally upset by it, but you can also respect the fact that they thought they had to do that. They had to resign, they had to walk, they had to leave, they had to get divorced, uh, they no longer loved their wife or husband and uh, wanted to make a different kind of life for themselves. You have to accept that people will do that and if they don't, a lot of misery uh, comes with it. By the way, I was one of the campaigners for Brexit. Uh, this uh, dichotomy that we just heard doesn't apply to me. If I was a member of parliament and everybody in my constituency 
was against Brexit, I'd still be in favour of it. Mm -hmm. Because it's about you. I think perhaps one of the, the moments in most people's lives, there are personal moments when loyalty is tested. The, the obvious one is when you, you find out someone you know, you love dearly, is perhaps having an affair. Do you tell the other person? Do you not tell the other person? Uh, and you feel that whatever they'd done, if it was someone like your mum or your sister or somebody you loved, you would stand by them. Oh, well, loyalty is it, only if there's something good to be loyal to. I think it's completely contextual. I mean, uh, when I was talking I about someone... You said this... that if your mum robbed a bank, you would still protect her. Yeah, so this, so this is the kind of example of where it's contextual. So I would, uh, you know, I would normally say that I am loyal to the British state and the laws in terms of I respect British law. But if my mum, or let's say my friends, so I don't get into trouble with my mum, robbed a bank, I would hope that I would hide them in the attic uh, because I would mm. be loyal to them. Or, you know, you can put it in any other kind of situation. Would you go the other way, George? Yeah, I wouldn't hide them in the attic. I'd, <laughs> I'd, uh, I'd tell them that they should go and confess to this A politician has crime. to say that. Would you take uh, them to the no, police? I, would you, <laughs> would you, would you, if they didn't want to go and commit, uh, admit it, would you go to the police and say, I know where the bank robber is? Probably not, uh, but that would be the end of my relationship to them if they did not... Well, I I think it would be, you're right, yeah. I think I, I think take a less the... selfish view of it, is what, how I'm trying to put it. I think mm. that loyalty, especially in politics, mm. loyalty never is meant hide to be a criminal. something Never about... hide a criminal in your attic. It, no, <laughs> no good I have got no criminals in my attic, I'd just like to say that. <laughs> but, but especially in politics, your loyalty is to the people and to democracy, and if yeah. you don't know that, you shouldn't be a politician. Okay. Uh, we're going to have to leave it there, I'm afraid. Ella, George, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, Samuel's saying, loyalty is super mm. overrated. The only things we should be loyal to are our hearts and our minds. I'm speaking on more grand scale and leaving the relationship aspect out of it. And Lorraine says, loyalty doesn't always get you anywhere, but it actually means everything to be loyal. It means you know who you can trust.